Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Our guest today has moved from the captaincy to the coaching staff. Instead of scoring goals, she's now supporting her team from the sidelines. A year ago, Grace Giancola led the University of Vermont women's lacrosse team to its first ever American East Conference Championship. UVM knocked off number one seed Albany to advance to the NCAA tournament, and Giancola was named the championship's most outstanding player. This year, she's an assistant coach, and today we'll learn about her transition from the playing field to the sideline. It's a great pleasure to welcome Grace Giancola. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's great to have you with us. And uh, so first of all, how and when did you become involved in lacrosse? Yeah, so I started kind of a little bit later than most people. I had only started going sort of into my eighth grade year. Um, my brother had played first for kind of his younger years and I was always really into soccer. So that was kind of my thing. and. He was like, well, why don't you just try playing? So I did, got into it that way, and then had some success in high school, wanted to keep going into college, got recruited, and that's kind of it. That's kind of the, the rest of its history. All right, you let go of soccer and, and went with lacrosse. <laughs> uh, pretty awesome. And these are this is in uh, Canton, Connecticut, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, kind of small up. town, more on like the mass border side of things. Cool. So, and then why yeah. did you choose to attend the University of Vermont? Yeah, um, I think I was kind of young when I got recruited. They have new rules now where you sort of can't talk to any coaches until your junior year. I was recruited fall of my sophomore year, so I was about 15. Wow. Um, yeah, so I think I was maybe a, a little young to really make an educated <laughs> guess. I loved where I went. I got very lucky and loved everything about my experience here. Um, but I think I just was like, oh, New England, love staying in New England home. And up here it was just really beautiful. and. At the time, the coach, I was recruited not by Sarah Dolan, but by the previous uh, head coach. And I just really liked her, kind of got along with her and was like, I think I could fit well here. And they were kind of one of the first schools to uh, sort of recruit me for Division One. So I just kind of always had a good feeling about this place. And so, yeah, I think and, I got super, super lucky. And, and coaches are important, clearly. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. So you, you earned a lot of accolades during your playing days at UVM. You were named the most outstanding player in last year's American East Championship. You also earned a spot on the all-conference team and on the all-conference second team the year before. Your playing days started by being named to the all-rookie team. You were also outstanding in the classroom, as evidenced by your spot on the academic oh, honor roll in the academic year 21-22. How did these achievements shape you and your role on the team? Yeah, I think, I don't know if the achievement so much had like in, a, in an impact on who I was as a player. I think I just really wanted to win and whichever sort of form that took, the accolades kind of just came with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, the accolades are great, but I think overall I just was like, how are we going to win this championship? And just over the years, the program has grown so much from when I first showed up to where it is now and where I think it will go. Um, so I think overall, um, the accolades are great, but I really was just kind of like, how are we going to win? And just kind of worked hard every day to make sure that that was going to happen. Right. And, and here, here you are, this is just an amazing catch. And then that's you <laughs> in the headband and number nine again, this is, do you want to talk about what, what's going on in your mind? Just get the goal. Yeah, honestly, that was that was kind of it most of the time. <laughs> like, uh, especially for this game, we started off the game down five nothing, so we were really chipping away. And I think sometimes, especially just after watching the game so much and just kind of with my experience, when you sort of see those lanes and those openings, that's your time to go. It's it's really time to get a goal here. So that was kind of my thought process going into that, or really like most of my goals when those openings are there, we got to go, we got to score. So. You got you you got to see it, and you got to go for it. And you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> really awesome. It's time to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and make sure that that ball stays right in there. 
Oh, um, yep. <laughs> uh, so there are plenty of challenges that come with being a student athlete, and you were injured for two seasons and unable to play. Tell us a little bit about what happened and, and how you overcame the mental and physical challenges um, to once again play the game at the very highest level. Yeah, so I tore my ACL twice. Um, my freshman year, about a month into being here, we had a scrimmage here and went down. That was the first one. Second one was in a captain's practice about to start my junior season. So in January of 2020, uh, which then we know COVID came yeah. shortly after. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that most of who I am now is a product of sort of fighting through those injuries. I was just always someone that wanted to play. I was always playing, doing everything that I could to be the best that I could for the team and for myself. So when, you know, that kind of gets stripped away from you, you're kind of forced to like look inward and sort of figure out like, what's my new role now? And it's a really hard task. Like there's girls or guys here now that, you know, you see in the training room, just kind of just grinding it out and trying to figure out how to get over this this injury and it really kind of has shaped me for who I am because I was sort of forced to look at myself in a whole new light rather than just someone who was always on the field and figuring out sort of that new role for myself has been something that I'm very proud of and I think that has led me to be in this coaching position because hmm. the other thing is you know you can show up every day and sort of sulk and be sad and you're allowed to have bad days they come obviously in waves but I think the other thing that happened was that I was just really into watching everything and learning and still listening to my coaches at the time. And I think it's just kind of helped me build sort of my lax IQ. And it came into when I could be back on the field, like making smarter decisions. Um, I think after the second injury, it was a little harder to sort of jump back in because then COVID happened and it was really harder to recover and everything and definitely a little bit more painful, I think. But I think overall, like once I got to my fifth year and was just kind of like, well, this is it. This is the last go around. It was much easier to sort of just have nothing to lose and just go all out. Um, and, but and it's it, definitely terrifying. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, but it, indeed, you worked through your injuries and you were yeah. twice named captain. So what qualities do you think um, make for an effective team captain that, that you, you brought to the fore after having these injuries? I think... I am definitely someone who's very competitive. <laughs> I'm definitely someone who's very much just like, whatever we got to do to win, that's what we have to do. And I think also from sort of, even after my injuries, I was someone that was like goals, goals, goals all the time, just always go. And I think that getting to the college level and then having to watch and also kind of just change up my style of play a little bit mm. from where I was in high school and even sort of that first month that I got to play here, I had to be a little bit more reserved and kind of find like what worked out for me and worked for the team the best. So I think that with that kind of came a little bit of a calmness offensively, at least. And I think that that was easy because I was sort of someone that I think people could like ask questions and look to, and also someone that was always willing to learn, I think. Um, so I think, I think that's probably maybe what, what made those, uh, those yeah. leadership qualities a little bit more obvious. Um, and when it came to being a captain, I think that I took that very seriously and with a lot of pride. So it was a great experience to be someone that everyone looked to, but also just great to like, I don't know, kind of wear that hat and sort of play accordingly. Right, well, clearly you're, you're a real leader <laughs> on the field and off the field. And, and now as a coach, what qualities do you feel make for a good coach that uh, you're bringing to the team? Yeah, I think that both of our coaches now, Sarah Dalton and, and Jess Drummond, I think that they have this sort of great ability to sort of inspire hard work and commitment from the girls. I always felt that playing for them. I feel like my role now is to kind of do the same thing, but in a different way. I'm kind of the young, fun coach that was just their teammate. And I really love being that role because I think that sometimes being a student athlete is a little bit of an overwhelming life. And I think when we get to go outside to practice or the girls want to do extra work or have film with me, like I like to be that person that can take the edge off a little bit, but still like, getting good work in and getting good reps in. So I think that for me, being someone who's really relatable and understanding of sort of the things they have to do in their everyday, but also still like kind of demanding that hard work and respect from them um, is something that I think I'm working towards and have been able to do thus far. So. Uh, terrific. And, and uh, just to go back a little bit, um, Grace, after graduation, did you think that 
coaching was where you were going to go, or did you have other options? What were you What were you thinking yeah, about? Yeah, so then? I kind of always loved the idea of being a coach, um, but I didn't really know how that process worked. And at least for me and my family, that family plan was ending pretty shortly after college. So it was kind of like you gotta you gotta go get a job, you know. And I, I just kind of always thought, oh, you volunteer or you do a grad assistant somewhere. Um, but I didn't really know how the process worked. So I found a job in sales down in Florida where my parents live now. They made the move once mm. my brother went off to college, um, lived with them, saved money, worked there for a few months. And then Dalt reached out and asked me how I felt about it. Um, and I was like, of course I've thought about it, but you want me to coach? <laughs> um, and I kind of reached out and leaned on sort of my friends and family and also uh, Sarah Dalton, Jess Drummond, and Casey Pearsall, who I had played under and uh, who has left us now, whose position I, I fill, um, sort of for their advice and their take on it. And I think now being here, I am i can't even believe I was contemplating it. Why it wasn't a 100% yes right away is still crazy to me, but and, we're still here. So Yeah, and so it's working out being a coach, uh, not a player, but, um, you know, being on the coaching team with people that coached you. Um, yeah. Is that just working out beautifully or is it hard to find your own voice? Is it working out great? No, I think that Dalton Drummond are really kind of respectful of what I have to say. And I also think that I kind of do a pretty decent job of knowing like this is still my first year coaching. I have so much to learn and I think they're really amazing people to learn from. I always, you know, looked up to them and respected them so much. So now being able to work with them is really just such an honor for me. And I don't know, I think we have a good time together. Okay. So I love coming to work every day. So, um, so and Grace, I think that they're a big part of that. We're out of time. Just a quick uh, goals for the team this year. Winning. Um, championship, always great. Um, <laughs> kind of an obvious answer. But um, I think also offensively, I think we need this younger group to sort of find their groove and their swagger a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think coming off of a championship, it's really hard to find a new identity and something new for a new team. Uh, so I think this year I want to see them kind of step up into their new roles and really kind of just find their groove and see right. how good they are because we have such a talented group. Grace Giancola, thank you so much for being with us today and good luck to you and your team. Thank you so much. For more information about women's lacrosse team and other UVM team uh, stuff, you can check your website uh, listed on your screen, www.uvmathletics.com. You can find team schedules, watch game highlights, and purchase tickets. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.